Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and thank you for clicking on today's video. So in today's video, I wanna cover what the best video settings are for the Canon EOS R. This is a mix between doing some research as well as just some trial and error over the past six months of using this camera. And this is what I've found to be the best video settings for myself. I think you guys can get some value out of that. Also be on the lookout because I'm doing a very similar video to this, but I'm gonna talk about the best photo settings in that video. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. And even if you don't specifically use this camera, a lot of this information is gonna be able to carry over to a whole a lot of different cameras. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the video settings I use on the EOS R here. So if you guys aren't seeing the same thing that I am right here with all the info on your screen, just hit info a few times. It'll kind of cycle through all the different looks until you get to the one that I see. I personally like this one because I like being able to see all these different things and then also the audio levels here, okay? But we're just gonna kind of cycle through these settings. So we're gonna hit that middle button or the Q on your camera. And we're just gonna kind of go through these and I'm gonna show you guys what I use on this camera. So the autofocus method here, um, there's really only two that I ever use. I'm gonna have the face tracking on if I'm ever filming myself or another person. If there is a face in the shot, I'm gonna be using the face tracking. It's super accurate and it's super quick. And then if you just hit the info button here, it will turn on and off the eye tracking, which just helps to make it even more accurate to follow your eye and make sure your eye is in focus. So it's super accurate, so I always leave that on. So most of the time when I'm filming, it's in that face tracking because I film a lot of myself. The only other one I really ever use is the one point autofocus. So I use the one point autofocus if ever I'm filming anything other than a face really. So maybe it's a product, maybe it's shooting some B-roll, maybe it's you know someone's hands typing. If there isn't a face in the shot, I'm gonna use the one point autofocus. So yeah, those are really the only two that I use when it comes time to autofocus. So let's just switch it back to what originally it was at, which was the face tracking. And then one thing I do wanna mention while we're just talking about focusing here, if we throw the lens in manual focus and we jump into our settings here real quick, if you guys find this right here, the autofocus method, we're gonna go right the manual focus peaking settings. You wanna find this, click on that. I always have this on. I keep the level of sensitivity as high and then the color red. What this does is whenever you're focusing in manual focus, it puts whatever is in focus outlined in red so you guys can see on there what I'm talking about. It's nice just to make sure what you're shooting is in focus. And then also that little box with the two arrows on there, that is this focus guide. So that just allows you to have a very accurate focus whenever it comes time to shooting manual focus. So maybe you're shooting a specific camera move or you're using a cinema lens and you have to shoot in manual focus. This camera actually has some tools to really help make sure you get that shot. So really helpful there. So let's go ahead and turn things back to how they were. So the movie recording, okay, this is definitely important. So I always shoot in full HD, 24 frames per second. 2398 to be exact and then I shoot the all I Kodak that's just gonna be the highest quality 24 frames per second 1080p that you can shoot in I don't really ever touch the 4k on this camera just because it has such a crop so most of the time I'm just gonna be on that full HD 24 frames per second if I ever am shooting anything else it's gonna be this guy right here which is just the highest quality 60 frames per second again in 1080p because I don't touch the 4k so it's really only ever gonna be between these two when it comes time for me filming on this camera and you guys will see both of these settings have an option of the similar thing to be IPB. That's just gonna be a lower codex, so it's not gonna have as much information. It's gonna be smaller file sizes, but not as high of quality. So I always just rock the all I, especially since I'm shooting 1080p, I don't mind the extra file size because it's still not that big. So between these two is usually what I'm at. So most of the time it's gonna be 24 frames per second, unless I'm shooting something off speed and I'm planning on slowing it down. That's when I'll shoot the 60 frames per second over here. So we'll just select the 24 for now. So the audio recording level, I've actually received a lot of questions about this before. I personally leave it on manual, which you can kind of jump into here in the settings. So the sound recording, I have it on manual. Um, I just have it basically a couple notches down from the dead center. Um, this I've just found works best for me. I kind of just know how loud to talk when I'm filming these days and I always kind of keep the sound levels up so I can kind of see if I'm peaking too much or whatever. I have heard a lot of people that vlog just use auto so maybe I should try that out a little bit more but for myself I like to just kind of have a consistent level so most of the time I just keep it on manual with a couple notches down below kind of the middle there. Okay the volume this is just if you have headphones in the volume that you're listening to. 
I don't really ever have headphones in. I just have it bumped all the way up. So if I do listen to playback while, you know, I just have the camera here, I can hear at least what I'm saying just out of the camera body, but this doesn't really matter too much for me. So it's not going to adjust the actual recording volume. So I wouldn't really worry about this too much. So moving on to the movie digital IS here, I've talked about this before, but this camera doesn't have IBIS. So it doesn't have an internal stabilization. So this is basically the camera's digital version of this. So it has a couple different settings in here. If you enable it, as you can see, it kind of crops in your shot a little bit. And if you go to the enhanced, it's even more, but basically that's just going to help try to kind of smooth out some of your shaky footage. So if you're doing something that's handheld or whatever, it's just going to try to smooth out some of that footage. So that's why it kind of has to do that crop for you. I usually leave that off most of the time, unless maybe I'm doing some handheld B roll, maybe then I'll turn it on. But mostly for me, I kind of want as wide as the shot as I can. So I'll kind of just leave that off most of the time. So movie digital IS, that's what it is most of the time just leave it disabled. So moving to the other side of the screen, there's really just one more thing to talk about and that is gonna be the white balance. So a lot of times I keep it just on daylight because I'm either using actual natural sunlight or I'm using my Aperture 120D that is already daylight white balanced. So most of the time, whatever I'm filming is already kind of balanced to daylight. So that's just what I'm gonna leave it on. But you know, if you are running all around the town, whatever it is, maybe try out auto white balance. But if you're moving in a bunch of different situations, it's not always accurate. So definitely try out auto white balance. But usually for me, I just have daylight on or if I want to, I'll switch it over to the Kelvin and kind of adjust it to whatever looks natural to me, maybe in that environment, or maybe you're kind of somewhere where there's mixed lighting and you kind of have to make a call. So I'll switch it over to Kelvin if I have to, to be more accurate. But if I'm just filming in my office here, I'm usually just gonna keep it on daylight. So if we hop into the menu here, a lot of these things are pretty redundant. You can kind of change the settings on that main screen or just in the menu in here. So a lot of these things you guys are gonna kind of see are similar to what we already talked about, but there are a couple that I do wanna just mention real quick. Okay, so let's talk about picture style and Canon log here real quick. Okay, so if you guys have been watching the channel, you know I really enjoy the C-Log on this camera. It's actually part of the reason why I invested in this camera. So picture style is grayed out because I have Canon log turned on. So let's hop in here real quick. So if you aren't familiar with what log footage is, basically it's a very desaturated, low contrast image. Your image is gonna look pretty gray, but basically the benefit of shooting in that is when it comes time to color grade, it gives you some more flexibility with dynamic range. So you can get more details in the shadows, more details in the highlights. So overall, it just helps create a better looking image. It does take a little bit more time to color grade when you are shooting in a log profile, but that's kind of why I've dialed those things in already and I already have my own LUTs that I personally use. And I actually do sell a few of those if you guys are interested in that, but they're kind of set up for C-Log and kind of ready to go. The view assist is super, super helpful. So since we are talking about shooting in that very grayed out, desaturated look, this just kind of puts on a temporary LUT. So whenever you are filming on this screen right here, you still have some contrast so you can kind of see what your image might look like. I do want to add that if I'm not shooting in C-Log or maybe I'm using another camera like the RP that doesn't have C-Log, I'm just going to film in a neutral profile. The movie servo for autofocus, I definitely have that enabled. This section right here is kind of important. It is grayed out right now because we're on that face tracking. So if we turned off face tracking real quick, let's go up to face tracking. Let's put on one point autofocus. Then we head back into the menu. Now you can adjust them. Basically this just adjusts the sensitivity of the autofocus. So a lot of times I want my autofocus to be very quick, very snappy. So I've kind of bumped up the sensitivity in here, um, kind of on both of these. So kind of test it out and see what kind of works best for you. But those are just the two that I seem to like myself. One more thing in the menus here, if you go over to the shooting info display, head down the grid display. I like having on that three by three grid. It's just personal preference, but I like to have that on. It just kind of helps you out with the rule of thirds kind of make sure you get a good looking composition. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on here is just kind of the main settings that I'm usually filming at. So since I am usually shooting at 24 frames per second, my shutter speed is gonna be double that because I'm trying to keep in mind the 180 degree rule. So one over 50 here for the shutter speed. The aperture is usually always gonna be at the F 4.0 because I just wanna have the most shallow depth of field that I can. And I'm usually on the 16 to 35 F 4. So that just kind of works best for me. It's pretty much just always on that. The ISO is usually gonna be at 4 400. 400, I think is what works best for this camera. And I've heard that from a few different sources. So if you're looking to get the highest quality image, the ISO 400 is kind of where you want to be at. Now, I think this camera can go up to a pretty high ISO if you need to. Honestly, I've shot stuff all the way up into like the 2000, but um, I try never really to go over a thousand if I can help it. But if you need it to get a shot, I understand. But yeah, most of the time, I'm just going to keep that at 400 and then adjust as I need to. And that's definitely important. These settings aren't going to be perfect 
perfect for every situation. Obviously, if you're shooting something specific, you might have to adjust things a bit, but this is just kind of like my baseline and then I will adjust things from there. Then one thing that's actually really nice about the EOS R is you can set up custom shooting modes. So let's say we get all of our settings dialed in for vlogging. I'm gonna have it default to face tracking and I can adjust it as I need to. But you know, we kind of have our default settings that we want it to be in. All you do is then jump into your menu. Then you are looking for this right here. Custom shooting mode. You go into register settings and then boom, you click that right there. You basically have your settings set to any three of these custom shooting modes. So the way I've done it is I have custom one set up as my 24 frames per second shooting. And then I have my custom two set up to be my 60 frames per second. So if I'm vlogging most of the time, I'm gonna be in custom one. That's with this, with all these settings. And then if I wanna shoot some B-roll, something off speed, all I do is hit mode and then go to C2 and then boom, it puts me into 60 frames per second right away. As you guys can see, it takes off the face tracking, puts on the one point autofocus because if I'm shooting off speed, it's usually not of a face. It's gonna be of a product or something else. It's going to go ahead and change all my settings, including my shutter speed and ISO here. That's adjusted to be a little bit higher because I am shooting that higher frame rate. So you wanna keep in mind that 180 degree rule. And then also you just need more light. So it's gonna just bump up my ISO. And again, depending on where you're shooting and what you are shooting specifically, you might have to adjust these things a bit, but super handy that you can just kind of switch between these two modes. And it just doesn't slow you down switching between shooting in 24 frames per second, then also switching over and shooting slow-mo. So just super nice. One last thing that I should mention since it is the EOS R, there is the touch bar up here. I personally don't really ever use that. You can change it within the menu to make it whatever you want. The only thing that I've ever found it's somewhat useful for, you can set it to be the white balance so you can swipe left and right on it and change the white balance on there. But again, since I kind of just keep my white balance at daylight, I don't really ever use that, but I at least wanted to mention it in this video. I just personally don't really use it too much. But that's really about it when it comes time to shoot video on the EOS R. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up all the video settings that I use when it comes time to film on the EOS R. Like I said, this has been a lot of trial and error with this camera, but this is just kind of what I've found works best for me and my needs. So hopefully you guys were able to take some value out of this video. Like I said, I'm gonna be dropping another video very similar to this, but covering all my photo settings. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. If you guys have any questions about things that maybe I didn't cover in this video, go ahead and drop it in the comments below and I'll be down there responding to everybody Buddy. But that's going to be it, guys. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I'm a content creator trying to help other creators create better looking content. That is a mouthful. And my name is Johnny, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.